My next step is to remove the serpentine belt. The routing diagram is missing, so I drew mine in this piece of paper so I can install it back the way it should be. It's simple, right? You just release the tension from the tensioner. Now that the serpentine belt's out of the way, I'm going to remove the AC bypass pulley and install the AC compressor back on. I'm going to remove this guide pins right here because the compressor already has them so it looks like they were installed prior to installing the bypass pulley so I'm taking those off Obviously, the compressor needs longer bolts, right? Thankfully, he kept them, so I'm using the original bolts. Alright, so I got them started, now I'm just going to get a socket and a ratchet and fasten it up. I'll fast forward to the next step. Okay, so I have the compressor on. I had to make this spacer right here because the previous owner installed an underdrive on the harmonic balancer right there. So this is where the belt should have been and not the belt inside. So what that did, it put this hose over here that it was going to rub against the harmonic balancer so I had to move it this way and that's why I had to make this spacer it's very unlikely that someone else will have this problem but you never know if you end up installing an underdrive pulley right there to free up some couple horsepower on your car then you may end up having to do what I did to compensate for that okay so my parts arrived got the accumulator and the line that was cut off all I have to do is transfer this pressure switch from the old accumulator to the new one and another tip of advice when you're installing lines make sure you coat the o-rings with pack 46 and before you connect the last line finish adding the rest of the oil the system takes eight and a half ounces so you already put some oil into the AC compressor so deduct that amount and add the rest I'm gonna go ahead and install these components and then I'll continue filming when it's time to charge it Okay, so the next step is to apply vacuum for a couple of different reasons. The first one is to make sure that there are no leaks. So I'll turn the vacuum pump for a few minutes and I'll turn it off and see if the vacuum drops or not. And if it doesn't, then I'll go ahead and vacuum the whole system for at least an hour. Then once that's done, then I'm still going to leave the hoses connected 
and leave it for another hour or two and make sure that there is no slow leak. At that point, if I didn't have any leaks and everything has been evacuated for at least an hour, all the moisture out of the system, then I'll proceed to charge it and then I'll show you how. So let's do this. All the valves are open. You can hear it turn and sound. Okay. So everything is open. High pressure, low pressure. They open over there. And I can see vacuum. So, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and leave it for 10 minutes or so. And I'll see if the vacuum drops. Okay, so just so if you're wondering where do these lines connect to, here's your low pressure. The one that goes to the accumulator. And here's the high pressure right here, goes to the condenser. And then like I said, they need to be open, which they open clockwise while you're vacuuming the system. Figure I'll let you know in case you were curious. Alright, so the vacuum pump's gonna run it for about 15 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and then we're gonna see if the vacuum stays. And we're going to see if the vacuum holds. If it holds, it'll indicate it doesn't have major leaks. So let's see, vacuum pumps off. Low pressure still holding about 25 inches of vacuum. And the high pressure still all the way to the peg. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the pump back on. Okay, so it's been about an hour that the vacuum pump's been going. So I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to let it set for two hours. And then I'll come back, we'll look at the gauges to make sure that it's holding vacuum, and if it is, then I'll charge the system. So I'll start filming again in a couple hours.